You know, I woke up this morning having done my devotional and I was under the impression that I need to speak more about certain things that could encourage your faith. I'm in no way saying I'm going to do less of the preaching and teaching and exposing and refuting false claims online about the faith. But there needs to be a promotion of the gospel as well. So I'm looking to balance that. We do, by the way, every Sabbath have a church service where much of that gospel preaching happens. However, very few people are watching these messages. So you might not be getting the substance of the channel. You might be watching my videos, but you're not seeing what the senior pastor has been preaching, what some of our elders have been preaching. Even what I preach on the Sabbath sometimes is overlooked because of the length of the videos, which I completely understand that. So I will encourage you to check out what else we have going on on the channel. But if you want shorter segments like this, and most people tend to enjoy these ones better, we can definitely do shorter videos. However, what I want to share with you this morning is what the Lord laid on my heart about certain teachings and doctrines and biblical stories and so on that we can look at to encourage you in your journey of faith. So what we're going to be doing today is look at, we're going to look at a story of Jehoshaphat. Why this particular story? Number one is because it is highly possible you are facing some troubles in your life. It could be a fight, a battle, stress, anxiety, some sins you are fighting and wrestling with. I don't know where you fit in the picture, but please pay attention. Let's get to the story. We know the King Jehoshaphat was a good king. However, King Jehoshaphat did make an alliance with Ahab. Having made that alliance with Ahab by giving one of his son to marry the daughter of Ahab and At Ataliah, which is also the daughter of Jezebel, a rule and, and an evil queen, by him having his son marrying Ahab, Ahab's daughter, there was what is called an affinity, the King James says, or an alliance was done between Ahab and Jehoshaphat to the point now where Ahab had influence. You understand he had influence in the life of Jehoshaphat to the point where he could say, Jehoshaphat, help me with these things and so on. One of the things that did happen, Jehoshaphat was counseled by Ahab to join him to battle against a kingdom called Ram of Gilead. Having united to fight in Ram of Gilead, Jehoshaphat almost lost his life. It was in that battle that a bow that was stretched out actually hates between the harness of King Ahab. This is the day that he lost his life. However, there was a prophet who eventually gave the rebuke to Jehoshaphat, telling him, you should have never united with King Ahab. When you read on into the story, he went on to say that the three kingdoms of Mount Seir and the children of Ammon, and there was another third kingdom, they actually came together. They created what is known as a political alliance to go against the kingdom of Judah, which was the kingdom that Jehoshaphat was ruling over. So with that being said, we have a picture now of what is happening in the minds of the king so that we can understand the story in itself to see how it applies in our lives. Now let's look at what Jehoshaphat did when he knew that the kingdoms were coming against him. First of all, let's do a little bit of Bible reading here and I wanna come back and address some more of that substance. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. Having said that, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, now, this is the union of the three kings now, the three kingdoms that are coming against Jehoshaphat because of him uniting with Ramoth, with Ahab to fight against Ramoth Gilead. It's crazy, right? So here is this man who was once, who is a godly man, but made a huge mistake by uniting with Ahab because he went against another kingdom and other kingdoms got upset. Now they're coming against him. 
Now look at this. And it came to pass, and after this, and the children of Moab, and the children of Ammon, and them that beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea of the side of Syria. Behold, they that be of um, Hazaz on Tamar, which is in, e, in Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, look at this, set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Now look what done happened here. There goes a political alliance that is coming against Jehoshaphat. He got the message. He understood how serious of a thing this is. Having known that, what did Jehoshaphat do? Did Jehoshaphat trust in his army? Because in previous chapters, chapter 17 and chapter 18 and 19, we hear what is known as the Jehoshaphat uh, Reformation. And part of that Reformation was that Jehoshaphat actually brought together an army in Judah, which was about one million men, brave men, serious soldiers who could fight in battle. But I want you to notice what Jehoshaphat did not do. He did not trust in himself. He did not trust in his army. He did not run away, but he went out seeking for the Lord. So having said that, what was the type of prayer that Jehoshaphat prayed? He sought to seek the Lord. He proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Let's go back to our presentation here. And now this is where I want you to pay close attention. Now, number one, one of the things that Jehoshaphat did in order for him to find the faith and the courage to deal with the opposition, this is what he did. There was what is known as the five steps of victory. And I'm going to take some points here from a book entitled uh, 40 Days Prayer and Devotional. For those of you who've read the book, you know exactly how much substance is in this. Now, Dennis Smith gives five different steps in that particular book that Jehoshaphat did, and I'm going to magnify these things, okay? So having said that, let's look at this very quickly. The first thing Jehoshaphat did, he praised the Lord. The second thing Jehoshaphat did, he also speak of the past victories. He also did promises, problem, praise. Let's go quickly. Praise, past victories, promises, problem, praise. Every one of them start with the letter P. So now, let's go and begin to look at each particular step to see how this could apply in your life. Now, number one, praise. First, the king began by praising God's attributes. Look at that. In verse 6 of the chapter, remember, Jehoshaphat is in trouble. What did he do in verse 6? And he says, O Lord, O God, our Father, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Look what Jehoshaphat is doing here, friends. He is lifting God up in praise. He's magnifying God's attributes. He understands God has the power over the kingdoms of the earth. God rules over all the kings of the earth. God is the king of kings and lord of lords. And there is nothing and there is no one who can stand against God. I say that to say this. It is highly possible in your journey, you might be facing something, but it is good to also remember how big of a God you serve. It is good to remember, friends, no matter what the troubles might be, your God is stronger. So now going back to the story here, Jehoshaphat, not only did he give God the praise and the glory and the honor, this goes to show we must take on an attitude of worship. An attitude of worship whenever we are facing something difficult in our lives. It's good to read the Psalms and read what the scripture says that, that because the Bible says in, in Psalms 19 that the heavens declares, Psalms chapter 8, I should say, the heavens declares the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork, right? Actually, I was correct, Psalm 19. Psalms 8 says something different. However, we are told in Psalm 121 that God will guide us in our going out and our coming in. The scripture also furthermore tells us that the praise of God must be continually in our mouths. God inhabits the praise of his saints. Having said that, friends, we have to understand as Christians, if you are facing something difficult in your life, 
take on an attitude of worship. Take on an attitude of praise. Don't worry so much about what is happening. Don't be so concerned and overwhelmed with the current situation. And most of that which you might be facing is temporary as well. But instead of meditating and ruminating and, and wrestling in your mind and become wearied with the issue and build up anxiety and, and build up all this, the spirit of fear, how about you start sinking, praising God? Take the hymn note and begin to sing the songs and the spiritual songs, hear different songs and play different musics in a home, change the, at the atmosphere where the problems that are in your life, they can become smaller. So having said that, let's go back to the story here. Jehoshaphat did something even more amazing after this. The Bible tells us this. After he did this, Jehoshaphat did something amazing. Jehoshaphat reminded himself of the past victories that God has given them. The king recalled the past victories. Look how he did this in verse seven of the chapter. In verse seven, the Bible tells us that the king did this. Art thou not, art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and givest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And listen to this, they have dwelled therein and have built thee a sanctuary therefore for thy namesake saying, now I want to pause right here because what Jehoshaphat is doing here, friends, he is reminding himself of the victories that God has given him in the past. How big of a thing is that? That's massive. You see in your spiritual journey, God has been good. Oh, God has been more than good. He's been great. When you look at your life and you said, wow, look at the person that I am now. I may not be all that I should have been, but I'm glad that I am not what I used to be, right? When you look at your own life and you examine how good God has been, you take a look back. You say, my Lord, my God, you've been awesome. You've protected me, watched over me guided me, saved me from a life of sin. You've broke the addiction that was in my life. You saved me from this relationship that was crippling my spirit, from abusive relationship, from drug addiction, from alcohol poisoning, all these different things we were dealing with. Didn't your God save you then? You see, as Christians, we made a huge mistake sometime. When we face a particular situation, we look at the problem, we say, man, how big of a thing this is. There's no way God is going to get me through this. But wait a minute. Isn't he the same God who has gotten you through the stuff that you went through even before you, were a, you weren't a Christian? Even before you proclaimed faith and had faith in Jesus, didn't he love you then? Why will he give up on you now? So it's good to think about that. And like the David says, I have been this young and now that I'm old, yet I have never seen his righteousness forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. The Bible says, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. So the things that are happening in our past and the victories that we've won, we should look at them as catalysts. Look at them as monuments of victories. We should take a look back and remember what the Lord saved you from and how he's gotten you through the certain struggles that you went through. And now you are still on that path. You are still walking with Jesus. It's not time to give up. It's not time to throw in the towel. It's not time to say, there's no way I can finish this thing. First of all, it is the Lord who started with you. And we are told in Philippians that he which have begun a good work in you will perform or continue the work until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, chapter, yeah, chapter 1, verse 6. So the scripture tells us God will never leave you nor forsake you. King Jehoshaphat understood exactly what he was doing. He reminded himself of the victories of the past. And as children of God today, we need to remind ourselves of the victories in the past that the Lord has given us. Number three, the king... Proclaimed, the king claimed in prayer 
a promise that God made in the past. Wait, what did he just do? The next thing he did, he claimed a promise during his time of prayer about something that God had already made in the past. Let's look at what it says now in verses 8 and 9. It says, They that dwell therein have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy name, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto you in our affliction, then thou will hear and help. What is he doing here? Well, friends, King Jehoshaphat is actually claiming the promise that Solomon made during the dedication of the temple after he built it after the death of David. He's actually claiming the promise that Solomon said, if you come and pray in this house, if enemies come upon us and we pray, God will hear and he will help them. So what he is doing here, he's going through his Bible and he is saying, let me go throughout the scriptures. Let me go throughout the scriptures and find the promises of God and claim them. And I say that to say this this morning, no matter what you might be facing in your life, there is a promise in the word of God for you. You have to understand throughout the scriptures, God speaks in various ways. God speaks promises that cannot be undone. As a matter of fact, we are told if we take God at his word and we hold God, we hold him accountable to the promises of his word, he will fulfill them. You see, the Bible says the word of God in Isaiah will not return unto him void. For it shall go and do that which he pleases, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. The Bible says, the heavens, the grass readereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. You see, as God's children, the greatest thing we possess today are the promises of his words. And the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Have he commanded and shall he not bring it to pass? You see, what God said in his word is for you and me. What God made, the promises that are in the word of God is for you and me. So if you're facing a situation today where you're feeling weak, helpless, and hopeless, the Bible says in Isaiah 41 verse 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. And I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So you may be facing another different problem, right? What if the devil is out to mess with you, to fight with you, to discourage you. God reminds us in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17, the battle is not yours, but God's. We are told also in Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 10 to 12, the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the, in, against the evil days, and having done all to stand. You see, friends, enough has been given us in Scripture, like Peter says, great, exceeding, and precious promises, that by these we might be partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world to lust. You see, having received these promises dearly beloved, Paul says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Knowing that God has given us his word, we have nothing to worry about. You see, what you need to be doing now, like David says in the book of Psalm 19, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. You see, some of the things that I like to do throughout the week, as I go to the store, I'm driving, I'm at work. The promises of God are in my back pocket, my friend. And I'm ruminating. I'm studying. 
I'm reminding myself of what God have already said. You see, the Bible says, I will keep him in perfect peace in Isaiah 26, whose mind stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So let's go back to our story here, friends. The third thing, the fourth thing we're going to talk about here is this. Then the king stated the problem before God. And I want to pause to say this. Have you noticed something? Did he speak about the problem first? No, not really. The king talk about the, he talks about the praises of God, the past victories, the promises of God. It was in step number four that the king now began to speak of the problem itself. In other words, the problem wasn't his main concern. His main concern was his relationship with the Lord. His main concern was knowing whether or not I believe my God. His main concern was knowing, do I truly believe that God is with me? So he made sure that he was in a right standing with God before he speaks about the problem. Now, look what happens in now in verses, verses 10 to 12. Now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom that thou dwellest, that wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they have reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. Listen to the next few words. But our eyes are upon you. You should be excited right now. You should be smiling. What Jehoshaphat is doing here, okay, just like uh, John the Baptist says, he must increase and I must decrease, right? What he's doing here, friends, Jehoshaphat is making himself small in the hands of a bigger God. Jehoshaphat is acknowledging that my God is big, but I am small. And my problems are bigger than me, but my God is greater than my problems. And what he's acknowledging here, Lord, we don't have the power to fight against this great company. But he doesn't lose hope, though. He sees the problem as big. He sees that the enemies are strong, but he understands something. Our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon you, Lord. So what is the size of your problem today? How, how long have you been dealing with these issues? How long have you been wrestling with that health problem? How long have you been stuck in that addiction, that practice that you know God is not pleased with? How long have you been wrestling with that sin? How big has it gotten in your eyes? What about that financial problem, that marital problem, that relationship problem? Hmm? What about these things you are dealing with, the anxiety and the pressure? What Joseph had is teaching us here, we can acknowledge that the problem is bigger than us. It's stronger than us. But we have to believe that a God is bigger than all of our problems. You see, friends, the scripture tells us, For they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall not be removed, but abideth forever. Jesus says, For with men these things are impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. In Jeremiah 33, verse 3, the scripture says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You see, friends, the scripture also went on to say that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. You see, for those of us who trust the Lord, we don't have to stress the matter because God will take care of all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
This is what Joseph had understood in the story that he is bringing to light here in our discussion. Let's move on to next, to next promise as we bring this to an end. Next one, the king praises God's, the king praised God before any evidence of victory. I say, what? What are you doing? He did. Look what the scripture says. Way before Jehoshaphat knew what the end of the story was, we are told in verse 2. We are told the final verse is that Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and all the inhabitants of the Lord fell before the Lord and worshiped the Lord. You know when this happened? This happened before they went to fight because few verses down the road says they began to praise, sing praises and the Lord sent ambushment against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. So the victory, the fought, the battle was fought here, but he was giving God praise for the victory over here. What does this mean? You see, instead of waiting for the victory to be won, you can give God the praise in advance. What does this say? That's actually, this says a number of things. It, sh it says that in the counsel of God, I believe what God says it will do. It shows that you have faith in him. But you also shows that, number two, you understand the matter is with the Lord. And as long as you surrender this matter to God, He's going to take care of business. You're showing that you're trusting in God to bring about the victories as well. But also, how does that make the kingdom of darkness look? This goes to show that Satan has no power over you unless God has given him the power to do anything. He has to ask for permission, like he did the book of Job, to even mess with the child of God. And this goes to show, my dear friends, part of the ways you're going to get the victory in your life is by giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise before you have any evidence of victory. So now, let's do a little bit of review to see what we've learned today. And hopefully this has encouraged you in your journey of faith. So what are the five steps to victorious prayer, or victorious prayer, right? Now, there's several ways you can look at this, but these are the things that I've learned from the study, and hopefully this was a blessing for you. All right, number one, Begin by praising God's attributes. Number two, recall the past victories. Number three, claim the promises of God. Number four, let the request be made known unto God. And number five, give God praise before any evidence of victory. There was a man who now had the spirit, what is known as the spirit of prophecy. He said to Jehoshaphat and the people, be not afraid, nor be dismayed for the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. And I hope you remember today, this final scripture, as you face your trouble, remember that the battle is not yours, but God's. Was this a blessing for you? Is there anything here that was shared from the word of God that you can take home with you and apply in your life? Let me know which one. If it's all five, praise God. If it's at least one of them, amen. I want to hear from you. Stay tuned. We have more of these type of messages coming your way. Make sure you tune in to our Sabbath worship, okay? Because there, there is a word from the Lord every Sabbath, but you guys might be missing in that. Uh, but I want to encourage you to watch this service as well. For those of you who can, tune in, pay attention, and stand with us as well. You know what? I want to pray for you. I feel the need to pray for you because God is able to do amazing things. Let us pause and pray for about a minute or so. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, it is possible today. Some of us are going through something. We are wrestling in our spirit. We are dealing with some issues that are bigger than us. But my God shall provide all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, visit the heart of your children today. Speak to them, Lord. Speak with them, Lord. 
and comfort each one of them by your spirit. Lord, I'm asking today that the victory that is to be won will be won and rejoice and praises will be given to your name before there is any evidence of victory. Let it be done for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you. And have a good one.